Howdy! In this video, we are going to talk about block waves. Understanding block wave will help us get an even better understanding on the dynamical contrast we have been discussing in the previous few videos. At a later stage, we will talk about the contrast we see in high res TEM. The contrast can also be explained by block waves. Dealing with the block waves can be rather mathematical. In many cases, we have to deal with long sequence of differential equations. In this video, I will only focus on giving you a pictorial understanding of what block wave is and how we can use it to understand the electron beam crystal interaction. Let's start by looking at what is a block wave. I got the information from Wikipedia. A block wave is a type of wave function for a particle in a periodically repeating environment. The key word here is the periodically repeating environment. The function was first proposed by Felix Bloch, a Swiss physicist. When we think about the Bloch wave, the most common form is we have the electron wave as the plane wave, and we have the crystal to offer the periodic environment or periodic potential. The Bloch wave function is expressed as phi r, is equal to e to the power of i k r multiplied by u r. Looking at these parameters one by one, phi is the block wave, r is the position, k is something we call crystal wave vector, and u is the periodic function of the crystal. The key message is that if we multiply a plane wave, in this case is e to the power of i k r, by a periodic function, a u r, will get block wave, which is also periodic in nature. Here, I'm using this slide to emphasize a basic property of crystal, that the inner potential is periodic in nature. There is a small note I'd like to make here. The potential inside the crystal is a positive number, and it's reaching a local maximum at the nucleus of the atom, as shown in figure A. However, the potential energy of an electron outside the crystal is zero, and it decreases when the electron is inside the crystal. That's why it's always a negative number, which is depicted in figure B. Having a closer look at the block waves in TEM, for simplicity we assume it's a two-beam condition. As the electron beam travels through the crystal, we'll have two pairs of block waves. The first pair is k1 and k1 plus g. The second pair is k2 and k2 plus g. k1 and k2 represent the transmitted beam. k1 plus g and k2 plus g represent the diffracted beam. So we have four block waves in total under the two beam conditions. Each is a solution to the Schrodinger's equation. Note that the phi naught and the phi g we dealt with in the previous few videos, they are not solutions to the Schrodinger's equation. Therefore, they actually do not exist inside the crystal. Let's do a very quick recap. I hope you still remember this equation from the previous video. The wave function b1 can be expressed as a function of k1 and k1 plus g. Similarly, the wave function of b2 can be expressed by k2 and k2 plus g. Both b1 and b2 are pairs of block waves. Coming back to the previous slide, in the figure on the right, k1 and k1 plus g make the b1 in the previous equation, k2 and k2 plus g make the b2 in the previous equation. Within each pair of the block waves, there is a small wavelength difference. The small difference is caused by the oscillating periodic potential in the crystal lattice. The small difference will lead to the thickness-dependent complementary amplitudes of the transmitted beam and the diffracted beam, which gives rise to the dynamical contrast. When the electron beam leaves the other crystal through the bottom of the thin foil, the waves will recombine back into one transmitted beam and one diffracted beam. In the two-beam condition, the first block waves will interact strongly with the nuclei in the crystal. So you can see the maximum lies along the ion cores. The second 
block waves, they channel through the crystal, so you see the maximum lies between the ions. Before wrapping up today's video, I found some fun facts about Felix Block on Wikipedia. During his undergrad years, he was taught by Peter Debye and Erwin Schrodinger, who are known for Debye temperature and the Schrodinger equation. He was a fellow student with von Neumann, who is the father of modern computer. He's also the first PhD student with Heisenberg, and his PhD thesis was on the block waves. Out of these fun facts, I think the most interesting one is the photo. It is fun to see a theorist in the lab.